This is the fourth section of chapter 12 on differentiation, and this section is about differentiating quadratics. So these are the rules you already know about finding the derivative from the previous section. Now what we're interested in particular is what happens if I were to differentiate something like this, which is a quadratic. So I've got something x squared, something x, and a number. Okay, well let's apply the rule to find into derivative to each term. Right, so let's look at the ax squared. Well, we know that we're gonna multiply by the power. So we will have two ax, and then we take one away from the power. So that's like power one, so we can just write as x. If we look at this term here, now there's no power here, but that would be the same as power one okay and now if we apply the rule then what we do is we multiply the b by one so it's just going to be b and then if you take one away from the power you effectively get x to the power zero which is nothing okay or one so actually all we're left with here is just b and then if we look at the last term i suppose we'll put plus signs in between as we do each one if I look at the last term, this is the same as cx to the power zero. Now, if I multiply c by zero, what am I going to get? Zero. So there's no point taking one away from the power because we're just going to end up with zero, like this. So by looking at this, we can see three things that happen. The first thing is this. Any x squared term after we differentiate it becomes an x term so we started with x squared it became an x term then any x term so that was the second term in our quadratic so this term here what did it become it just became a number it became a constant and that constant is basically the number that was in front of x. So if this was 5x, it becomes 5. If it was negative 2x, it becomes negative 2. So it just becomes a constant, and that constant is the number in front of x. In other words, the coefficient of x. And then what happened to any constants here? Well, they just disappear. They just became zero. So any constants, any numbers that are floating around on their own, they just disappear, don't they? They become zero, so there's nothing to write down. It would help if I spelled disappear, right? One S, two P's, so they just disappear. And we can use these rules here to quickly differentiate a quadratic. X squared terms become X terms. X terms become constant, and basically it's just a number in front of the X, and the constant disappears. Example six, find dy dx given that y equals in part a, y equals x squared plus three X. Okay, so dy dx, so the first term, we know it's gonna become an X term, the two, we multiply by two, so it becomes two x. And then we know if you've got an x term, it just becomes a constant and it just becomes the number that's there. So two x plus three. Then in part B, we've got y equals eight x minus seven. So we want to find dy dx. There's no x squared term. So there's, no going to be, there's not gonna be any x term in the derivative in dy dx. The 8x becomes 8, and then the number disappears. So we're just left with the number 8. So in other words, the gradient of this is 8, which is what we'd expect. It's always going to be 8 because it's a straight line, and it matches with m for what we expect. And then cy equals 4x squared minus 3x plus 5. So we work out dy dx. So... We know the 4x squared is going to become an x term. 2 times by 4 is 8. So 8x 
the negative 3x just becomes a constant and it will become that negative 3 and then the 5 disappears. Example 7, let f of x equal 4x squared minus 8x plus 3 and in part a what we want to do is to find a gradient of y equals f of x at the point a half zero. So the first thing we need to do is to find the derivative f dash of x and we just apply the rule that we know for quadratics. So the 4x squared will become an x term. It will become 8x. 4 times 2 is 8. The negative x, uh, 8x, will just become a constant, become a negative 8, and a 3 disappears. And what we want to do is to work out what's the gradient at this point. Well, how do we find a gradient? Well, we put half. We put the x coordinate into this to get the gradient. So the gradient at a half zero. So we don't need the y coordinate, just the x coordinate. That's going to be basically f dash of a half. So we put the half in where x is. So we do eight times a half minus eight. So that's going to be four minus eight. So we get a gradient of negative four. So this quadratic here, if we, were go to, if we were to go to the x coordinate of a half and draw a tangent at that point, we'd get a gradient of negative four. So it'd be sloping downwards at that point. Part B, find the coordinates of any point on the graph y equals f of x where the gradient is eight. So the gradient is going to be eight where f dash of x equals eight. So that means when 8x minus 8 equals 8. So we would add 8 to both sides. So we get 8x equals 16. And that will give us the value x equals 2. So this is the x coordinate where the gradient is 8. We want the coordinates. So we need the y coordinate as well. And how do we find the y coordinate? We put it into here. So at x equals 2, f of x or f of 2 equals 4 times by 2 squared minus 8 times by 2 plus 3. So what's that going to give us? 4 times 4, which is 16, minus 8 times 2, so minus 16 plus 3. So that just gives us a y coordinate of 3. So the final coordinate answer is going to be 2, 3. And then lastly, part C says, find the gradient of y equals f of x at the points where the curve meets the line y equals 4x minus 5. So the first thing we need to do is to find the coordinates where f of x meets this line. We need to solve these simultaneously, find the x coordinate, and then once we've got the x coordinate, we can put it into f dash of x, the derivative function, to find out what the um, gradients are at that point. So let's start by solving 4x squared minus 8x plus 3 and 4x minus 5 simultaneously. So we'll start by taking away 4x from both sides. So that 4x squared minus 12x and adding 5 to both sides plus 8 equals 0. We'll divide everything here by 4. So I'll have x squared minus 3x plus 2 equals 0. So we want to find that to find x. That looks like it can be factorized. So x at the beginning of both brackets. The numbers are going to be 2 and 1. And we want negative 3, so it's going to be minus 2 and minus 1. So that gives us x values of x equals 2 and x equals 1. So these are the x coordinates where the curve and the lines meet. I want to find the gradients at these points, so I put these into the gradient function. So I have, I'll do f dash of 2 to find out the gradient when x equals 2. So that would be 8 times by 2 minus 8. So that gives a value of 8. And then I work out the gradient when x is 1. So that will be 8 times 1 minus 8, which will be 0. So what we have 
is that the gradients at the point where the line and the curve meet are zero and eight. So you should now be able to do exercise 12D on pages 265 to 266 of the textbook.